Welcome back to Science Click. Today, entropy and the arrow of time. Consider the following two images. The first represents a precise structure, an apple. The second has no structure, it is homogeneous. Now imagine that we generate a third image by randomly choosing the colour of each pixel. Once the image is generated, we compare it with the previous two. Which of these two images does the new image resemble the most? Visually, the random image looks more like image number two, homogeneous. Both have no particular structure, unlike the apple. If we keep generating new random images, most of them will resemble image number two. The probability of randomly creating the image of an apple is very low. In general, we will rather get a disordered image without structure. It is this property of looking like something random that we call entropy. Here, image number two has more entropy because it more often looks like a random image. In our universe, entropy is defined in the same way. The universe is made up of atoms, which can arrange themselves in many ways, and some of these arrangements seem homogeneous, like a gas, whilst others have structures, like an ice cube or an apple. If we randomly generate a new arrangement by choosing the position and speed of each atom, we are more likely to create a homogeneous arrangement which will look like a gas rather than an apple or an ice cube. Therefore, we say that a gas has more entropy because it looks more like a random distribution. More specifically, the entropy of an object is a number which counts among all possible arrangements those which resemble our object. The idea is that, at our scale, the lack of precision of our measurements and the very large number of atoms prevent us from seeing the differences between these arrangements. Although they are technically different, at our scale they all seem identical. Let's take a look at these two images. When we look at them very closely, we can distinguish the colour of each pixel, and it is therefore possible to differentiate one from the other. But if we look from further away, the precise details of each image are no longer visible, and the two images now look identical. Going back to physics, the entropy of an ice cube is thus lower than that of a gas because there are many more configurations that look like the gas rather than the ice cube. In a way, entropy measures the degree of freedom that atoms have. It tells us whether our object requires a precise configuration or whether it can fluctuate through many arrangements while keeping the same appearance. In a low entropy system, the water molecules do not have much freedom. They only have access to very few precise configurations and their agitation is very weak, which explains why the ice cube is cold. Conversely, in a high entropy system, such as vapour, the molecules are much freer and can fluctuate through many different arrangements. They are very agitated, hence the high temperature. Intuitively, the notion of entropy therefore allows us to characterise the states of matter, solid, liquid or gas. When we boil water, for example, the energy we provide it with, heat, allows us to increase its entropy, that is to say, to free the molecules which compose it, to give them a more random, disordered behaviour, and thus transition to a phase of higher entropy, vapour. The notion of entropy is very useful in physics and chemistry, in particular for characterising states of matter. But as we have seen with the example of images, the notion is much more fundamental and can extend to a multitude of other fields. In mathematics, Shannon's entropy measures the amount of information contained in an object, such as text. A repeating text contains little information because it suffices to identify the repeating formula to fully describe it. 
A more random, less structured text contains a lot of information because the only possible way to describe it is to indicate each character one by one. In computer science, algorithmic entropy is quite similar and measures the complexity for a computer to generate a specific object. The more information the object contains, the less it is possible to compress the code that describes it. The idea of entropy is even used in the study of biodiversity because it allows us to quantify the range of variations within a set of elements. It is also useful in the study of chaotic systems to characterize their unpredictable, random behavior, such as the fact that in the long term, a double pendulum can be affected by very small disturbance. Finally, the study of black holes allow us to assign these entities an entropy, which measures the amount of information they have swallowed. The entropy of a black hole is distributed over its surface, and the more information it captures by absorbing new objects, the larger the black hole becomes. Finally, entropy plays a crucial role in our understanding of time, and more particularly, the direction in which transformations happen. To understand, imagine the following two configurations. On the one hand, a balloon is open inside a box, and the balloon contains a gas with high pressure. On the other hand, we imagine the same balloon open but this time the gas is evenly distributed inside the box. Assuming that the box evolves spontaneously, can we guess the chronological order in which these two situations occur? Was the gas first compressed in the balloon and then escaped over time? Or was it the other way around? Was the gas initially homogeneous and then compressed into the balloon? Intuitively, our daily experience tells us that the gas has escaped from the balloon, that it would tend to diffuse rather than spontaneously return inside. In general, we have the intuition that physical systems tend to homogenize over time, that tensions, like the pressure in the balloon, tend to relax. If we put a hot object in contact with a cold object, we expect, for example, that their temperatures would gradually equalize. Yet, on a microscopic scale, the two states do not seem to have a fundamental difference. It is difficult to understand why the phenomenon would necessarily occur in one direction rather than the other. It is at this point that the notion of entropy is crucial. We saw previously that the entropy of an object is greater when the object seems homogeneous. The second state therefore has greater entropy than the first, and it is precisely for this reason that the process occurs in this direction rather than in the other. When we let a system evolve spontaneously, its entropy tends to increase, making the system more and more homogeneous. Over time, the entropy of an isolated system always tends to grow. But behind this very powerful principle actually hides a simple, logical explanation. To understand it, let's go back to our analogy from the beginning. A structured image that represents an apple. At every instant, we imagine making the colour of each pixel of the image fluctuate slightly, and we observe its evolution over time. At the microscopic scale, the image fluctuates, and gradually drifts away from its initial configuration. As time passes, it will go through multiple different arrangements, passing randomly from one to the other. But at our scale, the image of the apple seems to gradually fade. It becomes more and more homogeneous until perfectly resembling the grey image we had seen at the beginning. By fluctuating at random, the image itself has become more and more random. And as we saw at the beginning of the video, an image whose pixels are random has a very high probability of being homogeneous. In our universe, atoms are agitated and their microscopic distribution constantly fluctuates 
passing spontaneously from one configuration to another. If we wait long enough, the structure of the universe tends to be more and more random on a microscopic scale, and a random structure most often tends to be homogeneous. As time goes by, the structures in our universe have the tendency to blur, while its total entropy continues to increase. The entropy of the universe measures the progression of its homogenization over time. To conclude, entropy is a fascinating concept. Although very concrete, allowing us to characterize the state of matter and their transformations, it ultimately boils down to very simple ideas. In particular, entropy explains the arrow of time, the direction in which the universe evolves through simple probabilistic logic. Atoms can be arranged in many different ways, but from our point of view, some of these configurations look the same, and in particular, those which are the most homogeneous. As there are more of them, by fluctuating little by little, the universe naturally tends to adopt them in the long term. Today, the question arises as to whether the universe will end up being completely homogeneous. One could imagine that by constantly increasing, its entropy would eventually reach a maximum, that the universe would reach a point of equilibrium and that the arrow of time would disappear. Only microscopic fluctuations would remain. However, the universe is expanding and the phenomena of general relativity linked to its structural geometry can perhaps prevent it from this scenario of heat death.